Event campaigns allow you to create a distributed event structure, so you can have multiple events all as part of one campaign. These can be lobby days when representatives are back in their home districts or protests at a chain store's locations all around the country. Event campaigns are a feature reserved for our partners, so if you're interested in gaining access to event campaigns, please go to actionnetwork.org partnerships. Action Network also has an events tool for one-time events. If you're looking to learn more about just creating a single event, you can watch our Creating an Event video tutorial. To create an event campaign, you'll start on your group's management page. Click on Event Campaign in the Create a Sponsored Action section. The first thing you'll do is give your event campaign a name. Let's call this event campaign the Mean Guy Protests. Then you can add an image if you'd like. Images should be 1,500 pixels wide by about 600 pixels high. The next piece is to set your hosting options. You can set all of the events yourself by uploading a list of events, or you can allow only the members of your group to host events. Or you can make this an open event campaign where members of the public are able to create their own actions as part of the campaign. This feature is great when you're doing things like house parties or for people to take ownership of a protest at a location in their community. For right now, we'll go through all the steps for allowing your supporters to host events. Later on, we'll walk through what happens with other options. Once you've selected who can host, you'll put in your description. This should give people information on what the campaign is, what kinds of actions are part of the campaign, and tell people how getting involved might make a difference. It's your pitch for why people should come or host. So let's put in some description text now. For your description section, like all of the descriptions across any action on Action Network, you can use this formatting toolbar. Use this to write your description in HTML, change the font size, bold, italicize, or strike your text, add bulleted or numbered lists, indent your text, add images or videos or tables, insert links, change the alignment, or insert a horizontal rule. Use these formatting options to customize the appearance of your page. Below the description, you'll see this checkbox. If you've decided to allow your group's organizers or the public to create events in your campaign, you may want to check this box to be notified any time a new event is created. And now we're ready to hit Save and Publish. But event campaigns have a few steps to get set up, so we're not done yet. That's what this red bar at the top is telling us. The next step is to create our host form. When someone hits the button to host their own event, a box will pop up with these instructions. This is where you can tell them that you'll send them all the materials they need or that all events should take place on a particular day. So let's tell our hosts that. Let's say all events should take place on April 2nd. Once you've put in some instructions or information, click Save and go to Next Step. And now you're going to give your host some more details. They'll see this information after creating their event. This might be a link to materials you've created for them to download or contact information for them to write down. This can be a pretty detailed page if you'd like, and you've got that formatting toolbar again, so you can format your page to highlight the most important information. So let's tell our hosts that we'll send them some info. Once you've put in the host instructions, you'll click Save and Publish. And now we've got just one more step, the attendee form. Click this green button to create the attendee form. First, we'll put in the description of the event. This is the description that people will see when they click on this particular event that's near them. The hosts can edit this piece to include details specific to what they're doing, but you can provide a framework of an event description. 
So for this one, we'll just say, join us as we stand with the workers of Mean Guy Store. Now we'll click Save and go to the next step. And we'll put in the attendee instructions. This is what people will see after RSVPing for an event. Your host will be able to edit this as well as needed to provide details specific to their event, like where everyone will meet. Here, we'll just put in some contact information for our host. And now we'll click Save and Publish one last time. Our event campaign is finally live now. To view your event campaign page, let's click this view zip slash postal code search page box. And here's what the event campaign page looks like. This blue rectangle will be a Google map with pins on it to indicate event locations once events are created. Your supporter can put in their zip code over here and they'll see any events that have been created near them. Then go to that page and RSVP. And Anyone who'd like can click to create an event as part of the event campaign. If you choose not to allow supporters to create events, then this red box to host an event won't be here. Let's look at what the process of creating an event is like for your supporter. When someone clicks to host an event, that box with the host guidelines you wrote will pop up. Once they've read it, your host can say, OK, and go on to create their event. If they ever want to reference those guidelines again, they just click this red box up here to see them. And now this works just like any time you create an event in Action Network. Your host will first give their event a name, like Worker Solidarity Protest. We told all our host that all events should be on April 2nd, so we'll set that as the date. And we'll say that it's at 10 o'clock in the morning. Then your host will put in the event's location name and the address. They can also put in some contact information for themselves, like an email address or phone number. Your host can add an image if they would like. And now they'll see the description, which is pre-populated with the text that you set up when creating the campaign. They can edit this to add their own information, like where the group will be meeting. And now, who is sponsoring this event? Many people who create events as part of your campaign may be doing this work on their own and just be interested in helping and taking ownership of some of the work. But your action creators can also be partners and people who are doing this work as part of their organization. If they have a group in Action Network, they can create the action as being sponsored by their group. To learn more about groups and sponsoring actions, please watch our group's video tutorial. Below that, the host can also control whether the event shows up on the map for just anyone to RSVP to, or if they'd prefer to participate in your campaign privately only with people that they themselves invite. They'll click this first checkbox if that's what they want. Event hosts can also opt to get an email anytime someone RSVPs to their event. And they can cap the number of RSVPs that can be registered if the event is in a place with a limited capacity. Over here on the right is our standard RSVP form, asking for an attendee's first and last names, email address, and zip code. If your host wants to ask for additional information, they can do so using our form builder or with HTML. Only event hosts can add the additional questions. The campaign creator can't control that for individual events. Let's click Save and go to the next step. And here, hosts add instructions for their attendees which people will see after RSVPing. Again, this is populated with the text that you provided when setting up the campaign, but the event host can edit this if they'd like. 
Once the instructions are set, the host hits Save and Publish and is brought to the Action Management page for their event. Let's go back to the Action Management page for our event campaign and click to see the public page again for our campaign. See, this is a map now with that event on it. If we click on the zip code search button here, we can try to find that local campaign we just created. Here they can get the details and RSVP for an event. Now, all the steps we just went through were what will happen if you let supporters create their events, and then what happens when a supporter clicks to host an event. Now let's look at how you can load in your own events. Let's go back to the event campaign page. Down here, there's a tab to upload locations and events. Click here and you'll see two options for adding events. The first is for suggested locations. Use this if you're allowing anyone to create events, but you have ideas for where you'd like events to be hosted. For instance, let's say you're protesting a chain store's bad employment practices. For your event campaign, you'll want protests at lots of locations for that store around the country. Here, you can upload a list of store locations. When someone searches for an event near them, they'll see the ones that are already hosted, as well as a suggested location near them where they could host their own protest. To upload a list of suggested locations, you'll click on this link over here to download a sample file. Just load in the information on your locations and then upload the list. The next option is to load in a list of hosted events. If you want to load in all your own events, this is the way to do it. Again, just click over here to download the sample file and fill in the information for events. Upload the spreadsheet and all your events will be created. Note that with this option, you can create events that you or your organization run yourself, or you can add other people as hosts. If you want another person to be able to go in and edit the event themselves, or pull lists of attendees, or send emails to people who have RSVP'd, then they'll need to have an Action Network account, the email address for which corresponds with the email address you provide for the host in the spreadsheet. Once you've loaded in events, or people have signed up to host events, you may, be, you may want to be able to see a list of events in your campaign, pull a list of event hosts, or send your hosts email and updates. There are two spots for this. Scrolling back up, you'll see the first one, here where the Manage Event tabs is. In here, you'll see a list of all the events that are registered as part of your campaign. You'll see the number of RSVPs for each event, and the name of the host is listed underneath. Let's refresh this to see the event we just created. There it is. Next to the host name, you'll see a little envelope icon. Click on that and you'll be able to send an email to just that individual host. Next to the events, you'll also see a red Remove Event button. If someone creates an event that is spam or that's really not in line with your campaign, you can click here to remove that event from the campaign. It won't delete or unpublish the event itself. You don't have permission to do that unless you're the event host. But it will remove it from your campaign, so it won't show up on your map or as a listed event when people search. This green Download Event Report button is what you'll hit to get a spreadsheet of all the events in your campaign, including the date, time, and location information as well as the RSVP count, and whether the event has been published or is saved as a draft. You can then reach out to the people whose campaigns are in draft mode to see if they need any help and encourage them to publish. The other way to get information on your hosts and attendees is up here with these four buttons. If you click to email hosts or email attendees, you'll be taken to a new email for which all your hosts or all your attendees are already selected on the targeting page. And same with Create Host Report and Create Attendee Report. Click on either of those and we'll create a new report for you with your hosts or attendees already selected for targeting. On the emails or reports, you can always then add other targeting criteria as well. The other pieces you see on this page, including your statistics tracking and your sharing options, are all covered in our video tutorial on common action concepts. 
So please watch that if you have any questions about the rest of the components of this management page. And if you have any further questions about event campaigns or any of our other features, please go to help.actionnetwork.org.